Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We are back with another video for CSS course for beginners. If you are learning or if you are into web development and other things. If you are interested in web development, then you might have seen about the measurements that are used in CSS. There are multiple measurements that you give for your values. So let us see which are these. The first one is percentage. We all know percentage. It is relative to a particular element. Next, we have centimeters. You can use centimeters, you can use EM. Now, what is this EM? This EM is a new. EM is usually used for the font that we are going to use in our CSS. Now, EM is the default size of the font which we have written. If you are going to give a 2 EM, then it is going to multiply the font size which is already there by default with 2 and then it is going to give you the fonts normally. So, this is EM. Next, you have EX. Now, what is this EX? This EX is also used for the fonts, whereas EX is equal to the default size of the small letter X height. Now, if you are going to give a 2 EX, this is going to multiply the height of this small letter X, X is, is going, going to multiply, multiply twice, twice and it is going to give you the output. If you are going to give 3X, then it is going to multiply it by 3. The next one we have is inches. We all know what is inches. Next is millimeter, well-known measurement. Then you have a picas. Now, what is this a picas? One pi six picas, six picas is equals to one inch. That is, in a particular inch, you'll be having six picas. So, if you want to use picas, you can use picas. Then you have a point. Now, what is this point? What what is the base for this point? So, the base for this point will be one point. 1 point is equal to 1 by 72 of an inch. So, this is the measurement for a point. So, next you have a pixels. Pixel, uh, pixels will be given with the help of your screen pixels. Now, for the people who don't know what is the screen pixel, let me explain it to you. Think that this is your screen. And in the screen, there are millions of pixels together which are responsible for you to give the beautiful pictures or the beautiful view that you are going to see on the screen. And on this screen also, there are a million of pixels. Now, you might have heard of your cameras like 34 megapixels, 50 megapixels. So, there are 34 into 10 raised to 6 pixels now 10 raised to 6 is is a million so it is basically 34 million small small pixels that, that are, are present, present in that particular screen now here in this pixels there are sub pixels as well there are sub in a particular in these multiple pixels there are certain sub pixels if you're going to zoom one pixel then this pixel is having an, again the sub pixels that is one for green red one for green and one for blue so, this is RGB. These are responsible to give dif different color intensities so that we can see, see the colors on the screen. So, this was about the pixels. So, these are the measurements that are there in CSS. Now, let us see certain things that is colors in CSS. Now, what are these colors in CSS? Are there any different colors that are there? No, no, no not like that. The colors in CSS means in how many ways you can give the colors in the CSS. The first one is hexadecimal color code. Hexadecimal color code has six digit color codes, two for red, two for green and two for blue. And these digits vary from zero to F. That is zero to F for first R, for the second R again zero to F, for G, for both the G's and for both the B's. In the same way, you will be having six digits. Hexa means from zero to Yep, I hope you know the number systems. If no, I hope you know the number systems. If no, then I'll be linking the first Java video that I have added in the Java playlist. You can just check it out. With these six digits, all you have to do is you have to add a hash in front of it. Without the hash, the color codes are nothing. Now, you can think that there are so many colors, there are so many different intensities of these red, green and blue. How can you remember them? One easy way is to remember is you can just Google them. For example, let's see a quick demo. So here you can you here you can just here you can just type color codes. You can see there are so many color codes. I'll be just going with color code in HTML. Here you have HTML color codes. Here you can choose any shade of color 
from this color chart and here you will get automatically generated hash hexadecimal code now for this color that is gray 747a63 is the hexadecimal code that is 7 and 4 are for red 7 and a are for green 6 and 3 is for blue so in the same way as you can see here there are different different colors and different different color codes are available for you in this range of colors so this is about hexadecimal color code next you have shorthand hexadecimal color code now what is a shorthand hexadecimal color code it is same as that of your hexadecimal color code but a small difference is that if you have and this is an exception case if you have the same values for both the digits if you have the same value for the both the digits of red and both the digits of green and both the digits of blue you can omit one digit from them for example if there is a a a a a a then you can just omit this a this a and this a and your short and hexadecimal color code will be a a a or if you have for example a a e e and a 7 7 think that this is the hexadecimal code now you can see that these two consecutive digits are same these two are same and these two are same you can omit 1 a 1 e and 1 7 then you will be having an hexadecimal code as a e 7 now in the similar way if you are having something like this that is a if you have a a and for the green you have 0 1 and for b you have ee -E. now if you are going to omit this one here here you have 0 and 1 these two are not same so you cannot omit this so you cannot form a shorthand hexadecimal color code if you want to form a shorthand hexadecimal color code either all the six alphabets should be same or the consecutive two alphabets should be same or the consecutive two digits should be same rather than alphabets we are good to go with digits so these two digits should be same then only you can create the short and hexadecimal color code the next one is rgb in the same way as you have here the digit of hexadecimal that is from 0 to f here you have it in percentage that is a for rgb and here you need to give for if it is in percentage you should have for the red it is 1 to 0 to 100 percent for green it is going to have 0 to 100 percent and for blue also it is going to have for 0 to 100 percent so this is how you are going to give it in percentage next you have it in values if you are going to take these rgb colors in values then your values are going to vary from 0 to 255 0 to 255 for red 0 to 255 for green and 0 to 255 for blue next you have rgb a percentage now if you are going to add a small letter a over here then you can give the op or uh, you can give different intensities of that particular color see for example if you have given pink and if you want the lighter shade of pink then you can just vary it with the help of a a is equals to alpha and the value of a depends from 0 to 1 you can use 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to 1 and that is going to differ in the intensity of that particular light with percentage. If you want the same thing with values, then you have to use it with the value. Next is this keywords. Keywords are the normal words that red, green, blue, yellow, orange, brown. So these are the keywords that you can easily add in your formatting. So this was about the measurements and the colors that are going to be used in the CSS. This is all for today's video. Meet you again with some more contents of CSS in the next video. Till then, stay tuned and keep learning. Bye-bye.